Okay, Ellie, good girl. We have a $4.99 donation. Thank you very much, Ellie, good girl. And she says or asks, Hi, Bobby, can you comment with us on latest video with Dr. Gregor's Nutrition Facts? Dot org talking about keto ah jesus christ if you don't have any experience on the subject matter gregor don't fucking do it jesus okay ellie good girl of course thank you very much for the super chat donation thank you very much for the recommendation let us check out the holy gregor i can't wait nutrition facts Nutrition facts. So pretentious, right? So obnoxious, man. Nutrition facts. Here are the facts. The facts of the uh, cherry, cherry pink studies. I'm going to display. You're going to want um, plant based protein, keto. Oh, amazing. Is keto an effective cancer fighting diet? Yeah. So, as you might know or not know, the keto diet has been shown to fight off tumors and reduce cancer growth so therefore yes there is definitely something to it but dr gregor will teach us that we are totally wrong right we have to eat the daily dozen filled with phytoestrogens to fight off breast cancer that makes sense okay ellie let's get to this thank you very much for your super chat donation appreciate it and let's watch uh, the truth the knowledge the wisdom of Dr. Gregor. Whoa. Blood sugar, also known as blood glucose, is blood the sugar. universal go-to fuel for the cells throughout our bodies. Our brain burns through a quarter pound... It's the universal um, fuel for our bodies. Okay, so, universal fuel. Guys. I want to make one thing very, very clear. No, I'm not against carbohydrates. Not at all. Zero. I don't mind if you want to use carbohydrates, especially in bodybuilding. I said it many, many times before. It plays a role, right? You can use carbohydrates. However, to say that it's the universal fuel, whatever the fuck that means, is absolutely obnoxious. So glucose gets metabolized first. That is correct. Absolutely. Thumbs up, Gregor. However, if you would drink alcohol, for example, that would get metabolized first as well. It would be prioritized, so to speak, by the body. This is why certain keto communities and carnivore communities like to say that glucose is just as a toxin as alcohol. Okay, I kind of disagree on that. However, just because it gets metabolized first, doesn't mean that therefore it is the universal fuel ridiculous under sugar a day it's preferred uh, metabolic fuel uh, our body can there he said it the metabolic fuel exactly if you drink alcohol then alcohol becomes your first metabolic fuel you don't have to be a doctor for this uh, uh, break down proteins and make glucose from scratch but most comes from our diet in the form of sugars and starch. I really don't know if keto is fighting cancer or not. However, I know that this voice is giving me ear cancer for sure. Jesus Christ. Arches. If we stop eating carbohydrates or stop eating altogether, most of our cells switch over to burning fat. Um, but fat has difficulty getting through the blood-brain barrier. But our brain has this constant massive need for fuel. One. Why does it have difficulty to get to the brain blood barrier this is just an absolute false statement yeah sure if you are used to sugars makes sense of course because your body is used to sugars now however once you get fat adapted again and you get into ketosis your brain will run on ketones exactly and then it will be easy for the brain and you won't have issues so uh, Ah, Jesus Christ, Gregor. <sighs> Ellie, just letting you know, I just do this for you, for your super chat here. Otherwise, I couldn't make it further than 44 seconds. Ah, it hurts. An organ accounting for up to oh, half man. of our energy needs. Without it, the lights go out, 
permanently. What? What? About one quarter to one fifth of resting metabolic energy is in adults is expended by the brain. In children, it's up to 50%. Okay. Interruption of perfusion for one to two minutes is incompatible with function and in... Yes. Okay. What does that have to do with anything? You're not going to run out of fuel if you stop eating for a while. Your brain is not going to shut off. However, if you do veganism for a prolonged time, it will. Dr. Greger is the perfect example of this. To make that much sugar from scratch, our body would need to break down about a half pound of protein a day. Uh, that means we'd cannibalize ourselves to death within two weeks. But people can fast for months. No. The answer to the puzzle was discovered in 1967. Harvard researchers famously stuck catheters into the brains of obese subjects who had been fasting for over a month and discovered that ketones had replaced glucose as the preferred fuel for the brain. Uh, your liver can turn fat into ketones, which can then breach the blood-brain barrier and sustain your brain if yes. you're not getting enough carbohydrates. It can. Switching fuels has such an effect on brain activity that it has been used to treat epilepsy since antiquity. The exactly. So it has been used for the treatment of epilepsy against seizures, pretty successful there. Yes, and many, if you want to call them life hackers even, right, they use the ketogenic diet for more performance, for more concentration. Yes, it helps with that as well. Because many people find that ketones give them absolute mental clarity, much better brain fuel even. Let me just say that I do not necessarily subscribe to that idea 1000%. Since I've been vegan, I want to make this very, very clear. I am not dogmatic about anything any longer. Really, not at all. If you say keto works for me, fantastic, do the keto diet. If you say, hey, carbs work for me great do the carb route i really couldn't care less however to make those statements is absolutely fallacious anyways let's keep on going and see where he takes this prescription of fasting uh, for the treatment of epileptic seizures dates back to hippocrates in the bible jesus seems to have concurred to this day it's unclear uh, why switching from blood sugar to ketones as a primary fuel source has such a dampening effect on brain overactivity. How long can you fast, though? I mean, to prolong the fasting therapy, in 1921, a distinguished physician scientist at the Mayo Clinic suggested trying what he called a ketogenic diet. Okay, and all of this is interesting if you are into it. However, now he finally gets to the gist of it, which is, of course, the ketogenic diet, which is a fasting mimicking diet, so to speak, brings us back into this natural fasting state, right? And this is what it's really about. Nobody tells you that you will have to fast for months. Of course not. It is about adapting a ketogenic diet and dealing with those seizures. A high-fat diet designed to be so deficient in carbohydrates it could effectively mimic the fast state. Exactly. Good. Remarkable improvement was noted the first time it was put to the test. Just. Efficacy that was <laughs> later confirmed in randomized controlled trials. Yes. Ketogenic diets started to fall out of favor in 1938 with the discovery of the anti-seizure drug, which would become known as Dilantin. But ketogenic diets are still in use today as a third or fourth line treatment for drug refractory epilepsy in children. Yes, 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 yes. Oddly, the success of ketogenic diets against pediatric epilepsy seems to get conflated by keto diet proponents into suggesting a ketogenic diet is beneficial for everyone. But you know what else um, sometimes... Yeah, okay. Now he's going to try to flip the script, of course, that yes, if you have epileptic seizures in some sort of really, really small, tiny percentage of the population, then maybe, maybe you will have to do the evil deed of eating animals. However, if you are a regular healthy person that can follow the daily dozen, then you won't have any issues and then you shouldn't talk about ketogenic diets. Guys. 
<sighs> Let's face it. Not everybody has a peanut allergy, right? And maybe you want to enjoy a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Knock yourself out. Go for it. No worries. However, there are aflatoxins in peanuts, right? So therefore, yes, you might get away with it. You might not get sick. You're not going to die of a peanut butter jelly sandwich. If you love it so much, go for it. However, it is, of course, not healthy for you. And therefore, I believe that we can see what is truly going on in food with sick people. So let me give you an example of the carnivore diet, right? The vegans like to say, yeah, but that is only due to extreme damage to your gut lining and whatnot. And therefore, people such as the Petersons, they will have to do the carnivore diet because their gut is so damaged. Okay, that might be the case. However, it just shows you that you get away with gut-triggering foods. So now, yes, okay, congratulations, you have a better gut than most, and you can get away with beans for a while. That still doesn't explain why you would take those absolute anti-nutrient-ridden foods into your daily diet. How does that make sense? Why would you choose those foods that are damaging to you just because you can get away with it? That's ridiculous. That's like saying, hey, I can punch the wall and I'm not bleeding. Yeah, but what's the point? Why would I punch the wall all day, right? You're doing micro damage then. It is ridiculous. It's absolutely retarded. And this is what they try to tell you. That only the sick people have to do the ketogenic diet. And you, you don't feel anything yet. You're not bleeding out of your asshole yet, like so many vegans. Then don't try the ketogenic diet. It's only for sick people. Ridiculous. Okay, we have three minutes in. Absorbs for intractable epilepsy? epilepsy? Brain surgery. Brain. But I don't hear people at the gym clamoring to get their skulls sawed open. Right? No. Uh, since when do no. we... <laughs> Exactly. So this is exactly where he will go down now. This is that route. In the gym, you don't need it. And uh, you're not going down to the... <sighs> it is not about sick people. You see an effect in sick people. It gets extrapolated. But underlaying, you will have those issues as well. This is why so many people that don't even know that they are depressed feel absolute relief once they try the carnivore diet. <sighs> Medical therapies translate into healthy lifestyle choices. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, scrambling brain activity with electroshock therapy can be helpful in some cases of major depression. So what? Pass the electrodes? So what? Pass the electrodes? <laughs> so what? Yeah, okay, so he will just give you an absolute outrageous example, so you question that diet, of course. So it's the same, it's the same. Eating a meat-based diet was the same, like taking electrodes to your brain. Well, Ketogenic diets are also being tested to see if they can slow the growth of certain brain tumors. Okay. Even if it works, you know what else can help slow cancer growth? Chemotherapy. Uh, so why go keto when you can just go chemo? What the actual fuck? Do you really have to say anything to this? I just said that he's using radical examples and now that. Oh, I keto if you can go keto. What the shit? Promoters of ketogenic diets for cancer paid for by so-called ketone technology companies that will send you salted caramel bone broth powder for 100 bucks a pound or companies that market ketogenic meals. Oh, yeah, because the vegans don't have any supplements in place, right? So if you choose to use ketones or bone broth, that is up to you. But if you go vegan, you will have to take B12. You will have to take DHA and EPA. You will have to take D3, possibly a creatine supplement. You will have to, right? What's up, Vivo Life? What's up, huh? What's up, the raw vegan protein powders? Where you at? You're going to blame the keto for supplementation? This is ridiculous. Report extraordinary 
anecdotal responses in some cancer patients, but more concrete evidence is simply lacking. Even the theoretical underpinnings may be questionable. You know, common refrain <laughs> is that... No, 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 no. Yeah, of course, because that's uh, the argument always as a vegan, right? What is it? Oh, it's just anecdotal, but um, it's kind of lacking. Do it. You do not have any vegan population studies. It's all bullshit. It's all plant-based, allegedly, which is not true either, of the blue zones. That is that argument. That is your argument. It's dog shit. You're talking about Okinawans that are eating pork on mess. Vegan logic. Cancer feeds on sugar. But yes. all cells feed on sugar. Advocating ketogenic diets for uh, cancer is like saying... See how he built that up? Because we already established in the vegan community that sugar is our primary fuel source, right? Ah, therefore, not bad if the cancer feeds on sugar. Ah, wait a second. You have candida. Candida feeds on sugar. Don't worry about it because every cell feeds on sugar. Ah, nice. Hitler breathed air, so let's boycott yeah, oxygen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, next outrageous example, right? Hitler breathed air, so yeah, yeah. Wow, dude, this is so disingenuous. Ah, oh, this is evil almost, man. Fuck me. Cancer can feed on ketones too. Uh, ketones have been found to fuel human breast cancer growth and drive metastases in an experimental model, more than doubling tumor growth. Uh -huh, Some sure. have even speculated. Okay, so I can't see the study right here, right now. I don't know if he listed it. Let me check. Can we see it? Keto diets, muscle growth, are keto safe? Keto diets, does keto help? I can't find it here. I can't find that study, but I bet my sweet ass that this will be another study performed on rats where they've been probably fed by some sort of exogenous ketones and then they saw that the cancer grows. Great. Okay, that may, could, would, should, whatever. I would have to check that study and really read through before we can make any statements. Obviously, we all know Dr. Gregor, like his daily dozen, he is absolutely great at picking studies. The main site of ketone production. If you drip ketones on breast cancer cells in a petri dish directly, the genes that get turned on and off make for a much more aggressive cancer associated with a significantly lower... Sure, sure, sure. Again, yeah, the genes are getting turned on and off, just like the casein protein turns on the cancer genes. I'm 100% convinced that this will be just, again, such a cherry-picked study like they did with the rat experiment in the China study. We're going to give the rats tons and tons of casein, and then, oh, guess what? The cancer gene is switching on. Absolute bullshit study or five-year survival in, in breast cancer patients. Researchers are even considering designing ketone-blocking drugs to prevent further cancer growth by halting ketone production. Mm -hmm. And think about what eating a ketogenic diet might entail. High animal fat intake. He's just going to throw out that statement. Yeah, those researchers, they're thinking about ketone-blocking drugs. Yeah, great. We have statins as well. We have cholesterol-lowering drugs. Great. What does that tell me? We have androblocks, right? The ladyboys in Thailand, they're using androblock to block their testosterone to become more female. Therefore, testosterone bad. Testosterone is linked to prostate cancer and hair loss. Yeah, there you go. Maybe I should take androblock. Jesus Christ, don't you see that you can play that game in all kinds of ways? Doesn't make sense. May increase the mortality risk among breast cancer. There is some evidence to suggest that high post-diagnostic fruit, vegetable, whole grain, and protein intake decrease the risk of mortality following breast cancer, while high animal fat intake increases the risk. Aha, uh -huh. may, could be, should be. But where is the protein coming from? So protein could potentially have beneficial, huh? Beneficial properties. Could that be? 
So what are we talking about? Lean chicken breast? Huh? What are we talking about? Nobody's talking about plant protein here. But ah, oh, here, the high animal fat intake, that's the issue, right? Really the survivors nice. and potentially play a role mm -hmm. in its development in the uh, first place no. through oxidative stress, hormone disruption, or inflammation. Mm. Men too. A strong association has been found between saturated fat intake and prostate cancer. Per On the other hand, the result of our study supports a strong association between saturated fat intake and prostate cancer progression <laughs> and survival. Yeah, of course, our study shows that. One study. I can list you 10,000 studies that show the exact opposite. So what? Progression. Those in the top third of consumption of these kinds of fat-rich animal foods appeared to triple their risk of dying from prostate cancer. Yeah, great. And of course, they never take into account how those fats have been consumed. Have they been totally oxidized? Have they been completely burned to the ground in a pan? Have they been combined with carbohydrate-rich foods? What happened there exactly? Was it processed? Where does that food come from? Is it from the animal industry where you will find an accumulation of toxins in the fatty tissues of those animals? All things that he willingly doesn't discuss. Not necessarily fat in general. Uh, no difference <clears throat> in breast cancer death rates based on total fat intake, but uh -huh. saturated fat intake may yeah. negatively impact breast cancer survival. A yeah, may, may, absolute dog shit, as always. The saturated fat claim has been debunked a billion times. And on top of that, if you are promoting a high-carb vegan diet that will, by default, come with a fuck ton of fiber, that fiber will ferment in your colon and what will get excreted saturated fats so basically when you're running high cup you are essentially running on saturated fats again it's absolutely ridiculous 50 percent increased risk of dying from breast cancer yeah, sure. there's a reason the official american cancer society and american society of clinical oncology breast cancer survivorship care guidelines recommend a dietary pattern for breast cancer patients that's essentially the opposite of a ketogenic diet. High in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and legumes, meaning yeah, beans, sure. slippies, chickpeas, and lentils. And Absolutely, and why do they recommend that? Because our nutritional board is hijacked by vegetarians. I talked about that in my last video as well. If you watched it, it was about the vegan parents, and I mentioned the World Health Organization on which I will do a separate video on as well. 60%. Of those people working in the World Health Organization were vegetarians and they had a strong bias to promote exactly that. There is money involved, there is biases in those organizations. If you look into our food organizations, aside from the whole vegan agenda and the base that you have there, so many vegetarians and vegans, you will have to take into consideration that they are just absolute ridiculous food recommendations anybody that recommends whole grains and sugar must be questioned and this is exactly what you see in the food pyramid and in those organizations they are promoting sugar 30 grams of sugar why would anybody trust those organizations and low in saturated fats so far not a single clinical study has shown a measurable benefit from a ketogenic diet for any human cancer. There are currently at least a dozen trials underway, however, and the hope is that at least some cancer types will respond. Still, even then, that wouldn't serve as a basis for recommending ketogenic diets for the general population. Any exactly. Than right. Recommending <laughs> everyone go out and get radiation surgery and yeah, chemo uh, for kicks. Or breathe, uh, breathe the air like Adolf Hitler did. Yeah, okay, that was hard to watch. The more I've come Shut to up. Realize Shut up, Gregor. Ah. ah. Silencio. Okay. Oh. Jesus Christ. Over 10, 15 minutes. Ah. I've talked about Gregor in my ears. Ah. Can't do this anymore. Ellie, I hope you appreciate this. <laughs> Loved it. That was awesome, Bobby. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much for your super chat donation. This was the hardest super chat ever, Ellie. Jesus. Yeah, anyways, I hope this was enlightening a little bit.
absolutely ridiculous, absolutely retarded. As always, cherry picking studies, giving you super crazy examples first, building straw mans basically. If Adolf Hitler breathes the air, chemo instead of keto. Yeah. 